Hello, this is Peter Hommer from IBM. I would like to show you some of IBM Wasi developer solution components. So um, this overview diagram shows you that um, we are going to look at Red Hat OpenShift. Within OpenShift, we're running two distinct things. We're running the Wasi developer for workspaces um, that is based on Red Hat code ready workspaces, as well as the Wasi sandbox. And then different clients can interface with um, the sandbox. The Wasi developer for Eclipse, we're going to see. We're going to also see the VS Code extension, Wasi developer for VS Code, that is um, contained of um, IBM Z Open Editor, but also IBM Debug. Plus, we will see the Code Ready Workspaces IDE that runs in Wasi developer for workspaces that gives you a browser based experience similar to VS Code, also accessing the sandbox and giving you the same capabilities as a real LPAR um, that you would use for development. So let's start by looking at Red Hat OpenShift. When you get our offerings, uh, come in a so-called case bundle that allow you now to install so-called operators into your private Red Hat OpenShift container platform. So once you have these installed, you can go to the operator hub and search for WASI, which gives you then those two operator, one for WASI developer workspaces and one for the developer sandbox. Here we are already in the WASI sandbox project and we can see that this one operator is already installed, which I can see under my installed operators. And so administrators can go in here and deploy now with um, this operator multiple instances of the WASI sandbox system and configure it. Then a developer would use the OpenShift developer perspective to find here in a graphical topology view their particular sandbox and then use this information to drill down to a so-called services page that gives them uh, you all the details that you need to know to interact with this ZUS instance. So particularly, what is the SSH port? Map from the original 22 now to a so-called node port as multiple instances of the sandbox shame the same project. They will have unique ports that you can use to access them. We're going to make use of the RSE, the Remote System Explorer API that runs on this particular port 31. 615. And that's really all the information together with the IP address or the symbolic name of the uh, sandbox uh, to configure now a connection. We can now use this um, information that we found about the sandbox to connect to it from various development clients. So let's start with the Eclipse based client. IBM was a developer for Eclipse version 1.2. In the Remote System Explorer, here I already created a connection to my sandbox, providing host information, then my username, as well as the ports that um, we just saw um, listed in the overview page. And with that connection, I can directly access now my sandbox files in the same way I would do it with any other physical helper um, that I'm having for, that I'm using for development. The experience is entirely transparent. So I have here a data set with a COBOL program that I can open directly from here. I can see that um, the language features kick in. I have an outline view that allows me to quickly navigate. I have various language features, such as code completion, or some really um, uh, cool features. For example, open the perform hierarchy now that allow me to quickly look for fall throughs of my program, as well as really advanced features, such as um, uh, looking at uh, data flow of um, various um, um, elements, like my trans key here, show this in the data flow diagram showing me how the information is being used um, by, uh, of this variable in various places and being able to navigate from here or showing graphical views of the entire control flow show control flow giving me a graphical overview of all my paragraphs and how they call each other alternatively to eclipse i can use microsoft vs code together with the ibm z open editor the IBM Z Open Editor is a extension to Microsoft's VS Code Editor that you can download and install free from the Microsoft VS Code Marketplace. So you can see almost 30,000 people have already installed it and are using it, and it provides capabilities for COBOL, PL1, high-level assembler, and Rex. So you can see up here um, VS Code and the Z Open Editor installed already, together with the IBM Z Open debug that um, is available also from IBM through its um, download site, as well as um, the open editor depends on Zoe Explorer, which gives you access to graphical tools similar to the Remote System Explorer that we were just using in Eclipse, 
um, now um, within VS Code. It utilizes the same protocol, the RSE and the RSE API, which we saw earlier also listed as a service running on my WASI sandbox that I can now connect to. Or as an alternative, Zoe Explorer can also work with ZUSMF. If you do not have RSE on your um, ZUS system, but ZUSMF configured, then you can just use that as a protocol uh, to use. You can see even that some capabilities um, are provided through FTP as another alternative protocol, as Zoe Explorer is fully extensible and can use more than one or alternative to protocols to interact with the US. Let's have a look how we use our RSE API to talk to the sandbox that we created earlier. So here I created a profile um, that uses the same address and IP addresses, um, sorry, uh, port number set um, we saw earlier in the um, sandbox configuration page. And now I can run a query against it, show me all my data sets, and they get retrieved from the sandbox in a similar way as we saw this um, in the Eclipse tool. So here are the same data sets from my sandbox that we saw earlier. I can find the exact same COBOL program that we were editing earlier, and now I can open this in VS Code. Now we have a full editing experience for COBOL here as well, but it's now tailored towards a VS Code audience. So the shortcuts and the whole experience is now for a VS Code user versus earlier for a typical Eclipse user. In addition to um, loading and modifying programs directly out of um, MVS, a uh, very popular approach is also now to basically manage your source code uh, directly in Git and uh, build perhaps out of Git um, uh, with a pipeline your programs. So you would clone your Git repository, load it here into a local workspace. I got the same program now here open again that I was just loading from the data set. And now I have my COBOL editing um, experience here, have an outline view and refactoring operations um, and so on. Just to show you a few examples, I can uh, click on a variable in here and I can right click and say, show me everywhere where this variable has been defined or including its original definition and I can navigate directly to all the different places where the variable has been used. I can then also, perhaps this was an impact analysis, do a rename. So rename would basically then just add a number here, rename this variable in all of occurrences within the program. So peak references now would show me um, um, those all those places um, um, where it has been updated and uh, renamed as well. So uh, very quick and uh, easy operations that allow me to do this together with a Git integration. So now I save these changes with the refactoring and I can see here in a side by side view now all the modifications that were made. So if I make larger sets of changes, I can always go back. I can look at the changes I made. If I don't like them, in this case, I can just revert them all, discard the changes and go back to my last commit, the state where I was before I made these changes. In addition to COBOL, the Z Open Editor gives you then the same capabilities for PL1. So you're opening a PL1 program, the same language server support that gives you editing capabilities in the same way. We have assembler support, a high level assembler, um, as well as we just added in version 1.2.0, Rex support. Right, all of these have um, similar capabilities. So I can have syntax errors down here directly, show immediately where I made mistakes, those refactoring operations that I mentioned, as well as um, things in particular here for uh, Rex, we added the ability to have um, hovers that give you directly information about the built-in statements. We have uh, code completion. I can directly select standard functions here out of the code completion and so on. Okay, so then let's move on to our third development client, the uh, developer for workspaces. So here we are back in my browser in uh, OpenShift and I brought back up my operator hub and now I'm in the WASI dev client uh, project here and here we have now another operator. We saw the sandbox earlier. Now we're looking at the operator that we installed here for um, the developer for workspaces. So I got my installed installation instance here. And I can drill down into this and can see my instances of um, these uh, code ready workspaces um, um, deployments. All right, so this is uh, Red Hat code ready workspaces with our tools pre-configured and pre-installed. So the, the uh, administrator deploys this and then provides this URL to the developers. 
They can manage user accounts using local key call cancellation or connect it with the LDAP. And then the user will basically go to this URL and log on um, with a username and password to their personal dashboard. So here I'm logging in with my account and I'm be in my dashboard um, that shows me that one workspace already um, up and running here because that's the one they want to use for the demo. To create a new workspace, if I don't have one yet, you can go to the Get It Start gallery and you can see um, various um, built-in uh, workspace templates um, that are provided with code-ready um, workspaces, but also our body developer template now that provides our Zopen editor. So the VS Code extension that we just saw is being integrated here and the editor experience is almost exactly the same. All the capabilities that you have in the VS Code extension Zopen editor you will find now in here in Wordy developer. There are a few minor limitations, but almost everything is available in there. So everything I showed you just before in VS Code, you'll be able to do now in this environment without installing anything. So the advantage is that administrators can provide multiple tiles of these. These are entirely customizable. They can basically provide the tools that the team needs for a particular project uh, together with other middleware technology and whatever is needed for the development of the project, package them up in a workspace, provide them for the development teams, and a developer literally just with one mouse click by clicking on this tile now would create um, some an instance and every developer would go in and be able to customize them as well so for example um, the um, the git project that gets cloned with this is something that the developer can provide but also there could be a tile in here for every team that already has all the git sources connected to it and the developer doesn't have to install anything they just click on the tile the sources will be there the tools will be there and they can start developing so if I would click in here, it would create this new entry in here, a new workspace for me, which I already have, and I've opened this in this tab. So basically, um, I can also open the menu in here. You can see this is this one workspace that's already running, and you can immediately see that the user experience is almost identical uh, to VS Code. There are a few minor differences, such as if I open up our SAM1 program here again, the outline view is now here on the right, but Actually, that's, uh, in my personal opinion, more uh, convenient to have it here on the right. And um, uh, otherwise, like shortcuts and over behavior of the tools is exactly the same. So I have the same language capabilities in here. I can edit COBA programs. I can work with PL1, Rax, and Assembler in the same way. I also have my Zoe Explorer in here. So here's again my demo sandbox connection i can run my query to retrieve my data sets and um, the behavior and the user experience is the same so let's have a look at a couple more uh, capabilities that are also in vs code that we have here too that we have not looked yet at so uh, one aspect of um, the solution um, framework is that we're uh, providing various ways of doing automation one foundation to do this is um, zoe and zoe cli so um, in this workspace that we created, we also pre-installed Node.js and Zoe CLI that I can now run uh, uh, commands such as um, Zoe RSE, list uh, all members of my dataset IBM user sample COBOL, which was the dataset we looked at earlier, graphically here on the left. And you can see I have now uh, command and operations to do things like that. And those can now be used for simple automation scripts or more complex ones if you want. So here's a very simple script that would basically take um, all my program files and my JCLs and upload them to MVS and then runs a JCL from here to execute um, the compilation linking and uh, testing of my program through this run JCL and then reports back the status. And so um, there can be very degrees of making these more sophisticated so here's a variant of that script that also waits for um, the run status by checking on the job status and making sure the job is actually complete before it starts downloading some report files and um, uh, bringing them down to the local development workspace here Another way of doing automation and for building could be using the dependency-based build. So we have integrated um, the open editor and uh, code-ready workspaces with um, dependency-based build to provide um, uh, ability to set and configure a um, dependency-based instance on uh, on ZOS, and then 
um, have simple right-click operations for uh, running a user build. So the scenario would be I'm making changes here in my workspace. I'm using perhaps Git to manage my program, my changes. And now I want to compile this on ZOS and run it and uh, make sure my change actually work. So all I did is a right-click operation and now I now uses some Zoe connectivity to interact with ZOS by first uploading files to um, USS uh, from my local workspace and then running a Groovy script um, with the dependency-based build automation. This builds my application and runs it and then would download some uh, log files for it. So the, the job has just started, but just to speed things up, I just ran this job just before this demonstration. I can open up the report file in here, so I get an overview report in HTML that I can look at, but also a detailed text report of this build that is running here in the background and um, the, the results and if there were errors, the errors that were found um, during the, the build. Another capability I want to show you related to this is um, a debug. So I'll be able to um, create a debug profile and be able to do a debug session um, in here as well. So there's a graphical interface to create a debug profile that it can be used now to connect to my ZOS system. So here uh, I have created one already that uh, tries to connect to my sandbox where I want to run my debug session and uh, provides me with information around like what the port is um, that I can run um, the debug session on. Then I will use that together with um, some JCL to actually start the debug session. So here's a JCL that performs compilation and starting the debug session. And then we'll be utilizing those port numbers that the profile has been created. And I'll be able to uh, basically run the JCL directly here out of Zoe Explorer, click Submit Job, and um, wait for the job um, to um, start up the session. You can see the job was submitted in here, one to three. It takes a couple um, of uh, seconds before the job is um, uh, running, and then I'll be able to connect with my debug session. To do that, I can switch to the editor's debug perspective. In here, we have two launches. The first one is to check that the debug session is actually available. Now you can see a parked session is available. I can use a second launch now to connect to that parked session. And then I will be able here in the source code to set a breakpoint. Let's select on in here, add this F statement and continue to the breakpoint. And now you have variables views in here where you can inspect your variables. So for example, the cust key and cust rec values, as well as the VS fields, and to follow along step by step on them changing values, stepping through here, setting more breakpoints, and, and so on.